Well, the test team has been announced for the upcoming two against England and Gavin Larson, who's a New Zealand's representative on the selection panel. Gary Stead is the convener. Gavin joins us, former black captain, man who's sat in the seat for a long time. Thank you so much for your time again, mate. Oh, pleasure, Martin. Good to be with you. All right, just running through a few questions I've written down here. Ish, Sodi and Ijaz out. Any good reasons for that? Uh, tough decision. Um, it really was, and... Um I mean, AJ, as we know, is a, he's, a, he's a fine spin bowler and um, we all saw what he did, you know, a while back in India and in subcontinent conditions. He probably wasn't at his absolute best in the, um, in the series, recent series against Pakistan and we thought Ish bowled um, superbly, picking up, I think, 13 wickets across those two tests. So he really, he really did force our hand, Ish, and, and good on him for doing that. Um, and coupled with that too, Martin, we've got, you know, I think a guy in Michael Bracewell who's really, really pushing his game forward across all three formats. Um, and as you would have seen, he, he also offers us spin bowling, um, you know, potential when we come to deciding that final 11 for Mount Monganui. Yeah, you put a lot of time into him, put a lot of faith into him. He's really repaying at the moment, isn't he? Oh, he is. And look, he's a very, very controlled, very measured guy. Um, great, great lad. And... Um, as everyone's seen, no lack of skill. Um, so he's he's developed and probably a lot quicker than what we thought he might on the international stage. And um, it, it, it's a real joy now to have a you know a quality off spinning all rounder um, across those three formats and such a destructive batsman, you know, at times as well. I want to talk about Matt Henry and obviously Kyle Jamison in a second. Glenn Phillips also omitted. Where's Where's he at? Because look, we see we see glimpses of him being an absolute destroyer. What's his future in whites? Uh, yeah, we think it's strong. Um, I mean, at the moment, really, he's he's just tucked in behind the incumbents. Um, he's very very close. He was a strong part of the discussions, you know, around this this unit, and and, and as, as he should have been. I mean, he was part of our squad over in um, over in Pakistan. Um, look, he is a he's an awesome cricketer. Uh, we've seen what he can do in T20 cricket. We're now starting to, you know, see him in, at his brutal best in, in, in ODI cricket. And we're, we're convinced he's a three-format cricketer as well. It's just a matter of, you know, the, the right spot opening up for him at the right time. Matt Henry comes back. He uh, had an abdominal strain um, against Pakistan. Um, so obviously that's all healed again. He's so reliable, isn't he? And Cole Jamison as well. And it must please you and it must also... Be so, I suppose, a, a, such a relief for him as well that he's over these injuries and now he can bowl for us again. Oh, it's super. It's been, um, oh, I mean, it's been tragic for him that he's had such an extended stint out of the game. Um, you know, he did that ab strain and I think it was Nottingham, if my memory's right, on that England tour. So that's, you know, that's a few haircuts ago now. So, look, he's worked really, really hard. He had a little upset coming back and, and, and had to go back to square one, which was a shame. Uh, but look, he's been so diligent and worked so hard. You know, I've seen him a couple of times over the last week or two. Watched him, you know, live. You know, he's jumping out of his skin. He's bowling well, and um, you know, it's just so awesome to be able to, you know, be in a position where we can name and name him in a Test squad again. Couple of tests then against England coming up, ladies and gentlemen. No Trent Bolt, and look, and this this to me is more of a media question than anything else, Gavin, because I mean, obviously, it creates headlines, and the, you know, people ask this question to you, and that. Was he really in consideration for this? I can't see how. No, no, he wasn't. Um, so you hit the nail on the head there. Um, look, I think the main point, Martin, is is that you know we've got very, very open communication. You know, going with Bolte. You know, he's a he, he's a great lad. Um, we all understand. You know why he's made this move, and and we congratulate him for it. It's it's a sign of the times. You know, it's a it's a real fast moving global cricket world. At the moment, and, 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 and Trent's doing what he needs to do to, you know, sort of, you know, cement his, his future from a, from a family point of view, of course. So, look, that, that, that's fine. Um, as I say, the door's open. Gary and him are communicating on a regular basis. We've got something called a 50 over World Cup at the end of this year. And, you know, we would love to think that, you know, Trent Bolt, you know, the stars align and, and Trent Bolt's opening the bowling for us. OK, so let's just make that loud and clear then. Um, and look, you've got to be pragmatic about this, you know, and look, I, I don't need to explain to you, but just in case anyone is wondering, we don't have a huge catchment of players to choose from. When you have an absolute world-class athlete uh, who you know is 
totally reliable. You know what you get from him. Also the tandem, of course, with his mate Tim. It's a one-day World Cup. We've got such a storied history in this tournament. We've come so goddamn close. If he's available, if he's fit and he wants to play, is it is it that simple as saying, yep, come back? Uh, y- yes, it is. Clearly there would be some, you know, some, some, some strong dialogue between, you know, Trent and New Zealand cricket and, and Gary holding the reins as the, as the coach and, and the convener of selectors. Um, but look, there's there's huge appetite, Martin, to, to, to keep Trent nice and close. And but we know his skill set. We know what he's done in the past. We know he's an absolute match winner. And you know, having having Bolte on the park for us, you know, you, that's you know that's a good starting point if you see him, you know, taking that first ball um, and, and swinging the ball at pace. Gavin Larson is with us. The Test team has been announced for the two tests against England. The squad assembles Tauranga February the 12th. It's a pink ball day-night test at the Bay Oval, starting on the 16th, and then the second test uh, at the um, at the Basin. Oh, I mean, again, a, a pink ball test. Look, I mean, it just feels like summer. I, Gavin, after what we've had in Auckland here, and you know, and I don't have to tell you, and I mean, it just feels like a river's running through the place, and you would have seen the photos of Eden Park and, and the, the jokes made about it's got short boundaries anyway. I don't want to laugh, but I mean, you know, you've got to kind of smile at some things, don't you? Because, I mean, it helps you get through all, all of this. But just a bit of test cricket. I don't know. I just think it might uplift the mood and feel, as I say, feel like summer's here. Yeah, look, I, I agree, Martin, and um, just pe- people I'm knocking into, you know, what I'm hearing around the traps around New Zealand, you know, picking picking the vibe up through through the media and the fans. It's, there, there is an excitement, you're right. I mean, we've got a couple of sellout days already, I understand, um, at, at both the venues. So that, I mean, that's, that, that's fantastic. And, you know, to me, Test Cricket is absolutely the, the, the pinnacle. I, I believe it always will be. And, um, you know, I'm a real traditionalist when it comes to oh, yeah. this match. I know. Mm. Yeah, to have a to have an England team, you know, coming down under the, you know, the, with bands holding the reins and, and and them playing in the way they are, I think it's going to captivate um, our cricketing public for for a couple of weeks, and and, and I think we've got a, you know, a couple of really exciting matches on our hands. You got to look at both Pakistan and India, and you know the two recent kind of I call the mini tours in totality, obviously. Um, and you know, winning a one day series in Pakistan amazingly significant. Then we go to India, and we just get walloped in most of those games. And I was really interested in um, Luke Ronke's comments, and I want to ask you about that. Where he says, "Listen, Jacob Duffy and Blair Tickner uh, listed Lockie Ferguson." Um, I know that um, Tickner's from this group has been retained, but he said these are young guys and, you know, they're going to have to learn their craft and it gets pretty bloody cruel out there sometimes, but cut them some slack and give them some time. Is that how you're feeling about it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, look, we, we knew that that, particularly that, well, both legs actually, Pakistan and India, but but India in particular, you know, with, when those stadiums fill up and, the, you know, you've got those passionate, um, you know, crowds and, and, and everything that comes with touring India, and, and of course, just simply the high quality team that we were we were playing. It was going to be the ultimate challenge. But you know, as selectors, you know, we we wanted to see our players under under that sort of pressure. We didn't have our what you'd call our absolute first eleven over there. There were you know probably four or five guys that were getting you know good good opportunities to show us you know their their sort of worth in those types of conditions. And you know, I thought at times you know Martin the you know, the guys responded and other times they, they, they didn't. You know, that last match was a very, you know, really disappointing one for me because I, I thought we didn't fire a shot and that was very un-New Zealand for me because we, we normally fight, you know, real hard. And, and I, But I think across all the other matches we did and we could have, you know, we could easily have won that second T20, that low-scoring one on the, on the spinning pitch. And, um, you know, that, that was, that was um, you know, I thought that was a good indication of the type of fight in our, in our team. Um, and a, and a little call out here for, for Ben Lister too on debut. You know, you walk out in front of so many odd thousand people at um, the bad and, you know, in a stadium like that. And look, the feedback about him was that he wasn't phased. He got on with his job. And I thought, you know, I thought he actually bowled really well. His figures didn't quite reflect that. And the over towards the end when he went for 17, he only bowled, he bowled one bad ball that got clonked for six. But he ex- actually executed under pressure well five times. But he still went for 17. And that's, you know, that's T20 cricket. Yeah, look, I was thinking that. I think it was the third one day that I was watching. And and every single shot they hit, it hit. It, look, it was like it was like playing on lino or something. The fields were, the outfield was so goddamn fast. It just seemed if you got it past the field, a bang, it was to the fence. And what is, 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 is do you think that that's how they're going to prepare their surfaces, pitches, both and outfields for this one-day World Cup? 
Yeah, I can't see anything too different actually, and that you know is why that that tour has been gold dust for us. Um, you know, we can bank a lot of intel, um, and then we bring back the guys that weren't there who who have played a lot, you know, on the subcontinent and in, in India in, in particular. And look, I'm I'm really positive. We, you know, we are a tournament team, New Zealand. We've proved that over the last sort of you know sort of six, seven, eight years. Um, we've done very, very well in, in tournaments. Um, so, you know, I think once uh, once that World Cup rolls around, Martin, I think we'll be in good shape. And fingers crossed, we've got everyone fighting fit. And I think we stand every chance. Gavin, last thing with us. I just want to go back to your point about how you're disappointed in that there wasn't kind of a lot of fight in the dog in that in that last one. What do you put that down to? And is that something that you're going to have to sit down with Gary about afterwards? Or he's obviously going to talk to the players as well. Because it's the most basic thing for New Zealand cricket, for every single team. I call it, you know, these days I'd call it the Neil Wagner. Just, you, you know what you're going to get. You it, you know, you, the dog is going to bark and it's going to bite at you and you've got to be weary, weary of that. And we we didn't have that. Yeah. Why not? Oh, look, I, I think it was a one-off. I, I really do. And I'm not, I'm not making excuses there. I think, you know, 99% of the time you do see that fight. And, and scrapping from our from our lads, and you know I think that was a one off. Uh, you, we were chasing two thirty, Martin, as well, and that you know <laughs> that old cliche scoreboard pressure. Well, mate, that is serious pressure. Um, and, and you know then we were four for spit at the top, and and I guess I was alluding to the the nature of the shots uh, that the, the four players, the four batsmen um, made at the top there, and that and that was the end of the game. Um, and I just thought we just needed to be a little more sort of, you know, selective and controlled in the way we went about it at the top of the order there. Um, and and bowling wise, actually, you know, whilst, you know, I don't want to say we didn't fight, um, we, you know, we we just didn't quite execute um, as well as we as well as we could have. And the margin for error over there on those pitches as well is so small, and that that's a major takeout for, to certainly for Gary and the bowling coaches as to. Is that you know we, we you can't miss by half a meter because you'll be, you know you you'll end up being clonked and um and, and that's a that that's a work on for sure. Two quick questions. We'll let you go, Gavin Larson, with us. We're talking about the selection of the New Zealand team, of course, for two tests against England. I thank you so much for your time. Look, I've got a real love thing going on with Daryl Mitchell, and I know Daryl's going to feel very uncomfortable about that, but I just have this guy talking about what you're just talking about. Just epitomises to me everything I love about New Zealand cricket. Like, even when we were getting thrashed over there, he was bowling hard. He comes in, he, you just know, you can see the effort on his face. He's really inspiring to me. Have you ever, anyway, any thought ever that Gary might throw a, a you know a black armband around that man? A, a, a black armband? Yeah, Someone captain's died. armband. <laughs> um, uh, look... It, he, he, he's a leader. There's, there's absolutely no doubt about that. So, in a, in a way, Daryl doesn't need to see next to his name. You know, he, he leads anyway. Uh, he leads via performance. He leads in the changing room. Um, will he be a captain in, at some stage in the future? Maybe, mate. Um, but he is, look, believe me, he's a tremendous cricketer. He has jumped all over international cricket since he's been involved. He's one of the first names down in all three formats now. And, um, you know, you just you just cannot uh, ignore his uh, his performances that he's put on the board. They've been match winning more often than not. So, look, tremendous cricketer, and um, you know, very lucky to have him sort of playing very very good cricket across the three formats. Yeah, look, he just appears to me like a guy like you know those numpties, a lot of the rest of us who sit on fan you know couches and yell and that and think, God, if I played, I'd want to play like him. Finally. Yesterday, a little bit of history for you, and I know that you love your cricket history. Uh, 1973, yesterday, the debut of one RJH at the Basin Reserve against Pakistan. And remember, he used to come in from Strathmore. That's how long the run-up was, Gav. <laughs> was, it, was it Strathmore or was it Johnsonville at the northern end, Martin? Yeah, no, I think it was. I, it, was <laughs> it was brilliant, though, wasn't it? It was just brilliant. Yeah, it was. And, and, and they're really vivid memories for me because I was... Um, I don't really want people to do the maths here, but I was I was about sort of 11, 12 years of age at that stage, and that's when I, you know, found my such vivid memories around sport, you know, rugby, footy, and um, and cricket in particular. And um, I was at the basin uh, watching that, as I, as many of my mates were, and um, yeah, good old good old paddles. Um, he's been a, he was a champion, wasn't he? Awesome, dude. Lovely talking to you as always. Thank you so much for doing that for us and giving us so much time. Real kind of pleasure this end. So, and nice to nice to catch up with you again. Yeah, oh, too right, Martin. And um, good luck with the show, mate. And then pleasure to help 